Hey everyone. It is Sunday late afternoon. The time has gotten away from me. It is 3.30. So, um, since I'm caught up on my journal, my daily journal, and I've been trying to find time to work on this, um, work on some plain journals. Again, um, mostly just plain papers in these two and just um, not very big. They are both about the same. So they're both uh, like this is about five. What would it be? I'm definitely going to be covering that up, right? <laughs> um, anyway, they're close to the same. This has a baker, uh, it's baker in the middle. But as far as this part, the dimensions, the dimensions are the same. So when I cut the pages, I can cut, cut the dimensions the same. And then one could probably take more paper um, than the other. Just a little bit, maybe quarter inch baker. So let's get the sizing right before we do anything. And we have seven and a half by five. Okay, so seven and a half by five. And these are all my papers for each one. And I'm just doing these plain journals. Um, that's what I did with my last one, and I just sold it um, as a plain, simple journal. I, I will definitely fix up the covers inside and out, especially this. I don't want the cover to look like that. Um, and do some decorating on the covers. But they're not going to be all, um, they're not going to be any theme to them. Like, um, I haven't done a nature journal in a while just because it's been so busy and I honestly just have not had um, time and I thought if I want to do some journals so I'm going to do these two, put them in my shop, um, they don't take as much time, I charge less for them and it gives you the chance to um, make them your own. So I'm figuring if it's five, I'm going to do a quarter inch shorter on the inserts. That's generally how I do it. Um, and then five by seven. Well, what was it? Seven? What was it? I can't remember. It wasn't seven. It was over seven. So seven and a half. So we can go seven and a quarter for where we want to go. So the, the length, so if I'm folding, let's say I'm folding a piece of paper like this one in half, make sure I'm doing it right this way. So. This is the long way, so this I want to be the seven and a quarter, and I'm going to just um, <clears throat> trim it like this. Yeah, I have to make sure. I want to be careful how close I trim. There, that's better. I don't want to lose too much when I trim. And then um, this one will be here and it will go like that. So then if I put it in the book, um, like right here, the height is good. It looks like, oh yeah, and then it won't be right here. It'll be in here, so you're going to have plenty of space. So that's how we're going to do that. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be good. So generally what I do is I like to fold my papers in half 
um, especially these smaller papers that I've got. And then I have some bigger papers. And I, I may do just a couple of pockets a little bit of sewing in the books. I'm gonna do just a little bit. I don't wanna do too much um, because I want them to be pretty simple, but I should have some extra material that I can do some pockets from that leftover stuff. So most of this um, tea dyed and coffee dyed papers, all different kinds of papers. And then I have this one that's from a little bird book, bird journaling book. So that's fun. And then I have this really thick, thick one of my eco dyed. So on something like this, um, because it's so thick, it needs a little help getting folded. So we'll just do that and then I've got those are my smaller papers um, and I do just want to start with them um, to make sure so this is fine and then I just double check and I can see um, I need to take some of this off so let's see I have to Let's see, it's so thick, I just need to do one edge at a time, otherwise it's going to be, it's too, way too thick to try and do otherwise. So we'll just do it like this, and that's fine. Okay. Um, and I probably don't have to trim any of these. I don't have to trim those. This one... Not hardly at all, and this way either, but I do want this to be even, so I'll give it a little trim. And this one, this one looks even, and I think we're close enough that I'm not going to do the edge. Alright, now I have these. And this is also eco dyed. That's fine to fold like this. I'm going to end up cutting off about that much. That's not too bad. And definitely here. So there we go. And then I've got um, more eco dyed paper. I love the eco dye paper. I really, I really like it. I should figure five and a quarter and five and a quarter, four and a quarter, four and three quarters, eight, nine and a half inches. Is that correct? I'm just trying to see how much I have to take off. This also eco dye paper. This one's a little heavier. So we'll help that along. This one is really long, so I think I would like I'd like to trim. Let me. The other ones are quite long, so I'm going to I'm going to figure out how long I need to do this. If I take off this and I take off this, okay. So then this is how it should be. This is what I want to do. Yeah, nine and a half for some of the ones that are big and I want to save a little bit of them for um, doing some pockets or tuck, tuck spots. Then I want to be sure I cut them so that I've got that. So if I go nine and a half, as you can see, then that leaves me a nice piece right here. So then, okay, that's the short. I always do this wrong. Let's see. I'm a little bit concerned that I didn't do this. Nope, that's right. And then if I take this, I have a pretty good size here as well. Okay. 
And those are pieces I can do things with. Yeah, even this, you know, I can do belly bands with some of these pieces or just little things. So I do like to save anything about this size is fairly useful for me um, in the journal making. So I generally do save those. All right, and this is also thick, so I'm just going to give it a little help. Anyway, today, um, oh, I was thinking it was just going to be kind of weaky, weak sunshine all day. But it's actually looking pretty good out there. So that's good. I'm going to go ahead and do the trimming because I want to be sure to have some of these nice pieces to use for other things. So that'll make it easier then in the end. Um, that one I don't think it's worth Trimming. Sometimes they aren't long enough to make it matter a whole lot. Um, let's try this. This isn't really thick, and I am kind of curious where it's going to get me. There we go. The only one I didn't trim off was this one. Yeah, these are a lot um, easier size to put together. I usually do three to four signatures per, um, per journal, but um, I'm going to do less per journal because I have a feeling that um, and not less, less per signature. I'm going to make my signatures thinner because I'm thinking that might be better in the long run. Let me make sure I got this right. Yeah, that's correct. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. This one's thick. Another big old thick piece tea stained. I'll make a good, good tuck spot. And this, we'll do that. So yeah, maybe I'll try like a bunch, uh, try that doing a little, a little different. Let's see if I can make sure I'm doing this the right direction. There we go. So when I fold it, I am folding it correctly. Yeah. Got a plan. Got a plan. I do want to get back into making nature journals, but first I want to make two of these, and then I um, would like to make um, a prayer journal that I'm making to give away at Sisterhood at Church. So... After that, maybe I will, and then I gotta make, I'm making a couple Daphne's diary inspired journals for um, some friends. So I have that to do too. Um, but then, then I think I would like to get back into making nature journals and hopefully I'll have time. Sometimes I feel like it just gets, it gets so busy, you know? So, I will just have to see. 
yeah so I am almost almost done trimming one side like I said it it really doesn't take long but I like I want to do a nice cover so I have to think about what I want the covers to look like and I do like to do um, kind of natural more natural materials on a cover that's just going to be plain um, this is very long so let's see and this is vintage and so it's a bit fragile so it is going to be a little <laughs> quite old all right that's good so let's be sure we got these how we want them so they're all going to fold this way so now I can go ahead and fold these and then we can get them trimmed the rest of the way like I said this is so much more fragile yeah I just it's a small size and I, I don't do this size a lot but I think it's going to be a good size and probably you know with what I'm doing I'm probably going to be able to make I always pick out too many papers so I'm probably going to be able to make three books instead of two books because I never I never plan it quite right maybe I'll make two books to sell and one for myself I still want one for myself I don't have one for myself so I have a nature journal that I made for myself and a Christmas journal but I don't know I just had this hankering for a plain one like this just to do fun stuff in you know who inspires me with that is Nick the booksmith she does the coolest layouts in her plain journals that she makes and then she does those journal with me things and they are so cool. I love them. You know, things you wouldn't think of and I'd love to do stuff like that for myself. Oh my God, it'd be so cool. And relaxing. And relaxing. So here in Minnesota, it is spring. I'm so excited. It actually came last week and um, the snow is melted off the ground. The only snow left to melt are piles that were piled up from, you know, when they had to plow and then they had all these piles of snow everywhere that are still melting. But what was flat on the ground is gone and when I look out, my patio no longer has over a foot of snow on it and the ground you can see the ground and as soon as we get a good rain especially um, a good thunderstorm I know that that will be all cleared up and it will be wonderful oh my gosh it's gonna be so wonderful I can't wait can't wait I love spring and we're just waiting um, so we can get into the yard where we're storing our tent trailer with friends. Um, we want to get in there and get it out and opened and cleaned inside and emptied out and then sell the tent trailer. Because we have, I think I told you we bought a Jayco Feather Light trailer. That our tent trailer, when it's all open, is about 16 feet long, 15 or 16, um, when it's open and the beds are pulled out. The Jayco Feather Lights, we don't have to set anything up. All we have to do is park it, level it, put the awning out, hook up the water and electricity, and we're done. And um, I'm so excited about it. And it's 20 inches long. And our first camping trip is going to be in the last weekend of March. And we're going to go down uh, southeast Minnesota, where I grew up, to Forestville State Park. 
and um, I'm so excited about it. Last year we went to Forestville State Park in the spring as well, um, but we missed the bluebells. They get Virginia bluebells all over um, the river bottoms down there along the rivers, and um, we missed it by week, one week. I was so disappointed. I so wanted to, um, look at that. I still, this is wax paper, by the way, and the coffee dyed papers dripped on it. I so wanted to, um, see the bluebells, you know, usually it just, it's just the timing. You don't know. And this year I have great hopes that we will be late enough in the season, you know, to see them. That's my wish. We will see how that goes. But that is what I'm hoping. So we'll see. We'll see how we do this year. Maybe spring will be earlier. Last year it was still, everything was still so bare. The trees were still bare, barely um, blooming, barely leafing out. And when we had gone a couple years before that in April, they were leafing out. The flowers were in full bloom. It was amazing. And I just, I love it. And I cannot wait to get to go again. All right, so Avi, I know I'm going to have too many for the book that I'm working on. I just, I always do that, you know. It's just, it's just the way it works out. That's okay. That is perfectly all right. I'm not worried about it. Because like I said... I can make three books, which I kind of want to do because I really want one for myself. So I'll have to see what kind of covers I've got left. I don't know if I have any more covers left that are this size. I probably do. If not, I can just go to a thrift store and buy one without any trouble. Well, I have one this size, but I'm... For once in my life, I'm reluctant, very reluctant, to cut it up because I like it so much. Um, it was an old reader. It was an old reader, school reader, that I found for like $3 or $2.50 or something. And I don't know if I can make myself cut it up it's, it's so cool but then what am I going to do with it I could go ahead and gut it and then what I could do is use the um, insides for journals because it, it's very cool it's really, it's really really cool so I don't I don't know yet I have not made any kind of a decision about that. But I want to at least get one of these cut up so I can kind of, you know, see how many inserts it makes and if I'm going to have any left over. Kind of like to kind of like to do that. Check that out. So I think we'll see. I think what I'd like to do, um, making one of these for myself, is I've got a whole lot of vintage ephemera that I've been given, and I'd really like to use it. And doing just some different layouts, maybe with quotes, uh, maybe with poems, stuff like that. Um, I think that would be kind of cool. So that's sort of what I'm thinking. Still inspired by Nick the Booksmith because that's what she does. 
and um, it just kind of makes me want to do something similar to that. So that's what I'm thinking. So we shall see, right? We shall see. Oh yeah, I've got way more than I could possibly use for one book. I can see that now. Oh my goodness. I always do that, you guys. Way, way over, over plan. <laughs> How much I think is going to fit in a book. Because it's always more than could possibly fit in one book. Always. It never fails. Okay, so what I need to do um, is get a little bit of this off because some of this is really not good edging. And there, I think that actually left it really nice. Okay, good. I like that. Okay, so here is my monster stack. There we go. Of lovely papers. Here is my book with the thickest cover. And so, you know what? It might work. Actually, I think it's going to work. I could probably do six, six inserts. Now, my question is, because that one can take more than the other book, if I did it in here, you can see it's going to be too tight. So I should take some of the papers that I was going to put in the smaller book and put them in the bigger book. So let me just kind of go through and figure out what I want to do. Let's take one of those. I actually have two of these. I don't think I meant to do that. So let's take one of those. We'll keep the eco dyed the same because those are special. Um, I'm going to keep this. Let's take that. Let's take that. And this one. We'll keep that one in there. And that. And this one. Two, three. Let's take this one. I'm gonna keep that. These I will just keep here. This one. That. Yeah, I want to keep for the most part. I'm going to just kind of keep it and keep it like that. Let's bring this one. Okay. And bring this one. And maybe one more. That way I think I think that's better. And then that gives me just a few more. Okay. So we're almost ready to make these into inserts. So let's just, let's just fold these up. I need to trim this one just the tiniest bit. <sighs> gotta be careful not to leave scraps of paper in this area. It makes it really hard when you're cutting stuff. All right, let's do this. And there we go. And I think, how about this one's probably really super long. All right, any others? Yeah, we could do, let's cut off some of this. It'll just make it easier. Ooh, not this one. This one back to that one. All right. We have a crooked piece of paper here, guys. So I want to cut it 
I'm going to spare as much as possible. And then we will just have to trim it straight. All right, let's see. All right. I just want to get it, you know, finished. Go like this. It'll be fun figuring out the covers. And I'll take um, some video time to show you the covers as well. But I would really like to get moving on this. So I don't know if you guys have watched the movie, the new one, Mary Poppins Returns. My daughter and I watched it in the theater, um, and I, we loved it so much. Absolutely loved it. And then um, we rented it. It was on. I was out on DVD, so we rented it from Redbox and watched it last night. My husband and I, and he loved it too. It was such a good movie. I enjoyed it tremendously. Just a wonderful, wonderful movie. So if you haven't seen that, I mean, just the music and the songs and the choreography and just everything, the outfits, oh, I loved everything. It was so good, so amazing. Okay, so when I want to now get these divided into however many inserts I want in the book, um, and I would like to do six inserts, which is more than I usually do. So I usually, what I do then is I try to divide them by type. So like this is lined and this is very plain. These, these are lined uh, and very plain. And then I got the short. So I'll put the short aside or anything set special like the music. Those all go to one side. And then if I have anything that's thicker, then I'll save that as well. So, and then we've also got, like these are all the lined ones. Um, This is extraordinarily thick, so I'm going to put that with my pile of special, special ones. And then I've got these ones that are also going to be special because they're that thin paper. Here's some more. Um, this is all lined again. This is more of a special, um, as is that. And these are all plain and plain lots of plain ones my eco dyed go in the special pile and more plain ones short ones eco dyed and so i have three piles and i want to do six inserts so i need to count how many i've got so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen 18, 60, 65, so more or less we have 10 papers per, okay? So let's start with the plane. So I think I got this right, so one, two, I have some that are a little thinner. Three. I'm going to kind of separate them out a little bit. Uh, just because. 
four, five, six, I think that's a good six, six. Okay, then one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I have some of these have the, um, the this stuff on them, like this. So I kind of want those, if I have any that have that ragtag edging, I want them out. So I know what I've got. I don't know if I have six, but I was kind of hoping I did. But it doesn't look, I don't think I accidentally did any that way. Nope. That's okay. Let's just continue. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And one, two, three, four, five. Now, see, I don't like that I don't have a matching one, so I'm gonna gonna make it <laughs> just like this we're just gonna do it all right so I'm gonna I want that you know so I'm gonna whoops <laughs> gonna try and do it without messing up okay so there and there all right that takes care of the last one I just wanted to be sure I had one for each one all right so six then I'm going to go through my papers, and I have some that are very much alike. So these. So one, two, three, four, five, six. How's that for working out perfectly? Let's see if that works for any of the other ones. It does. One, two, three, four, five, six. I just like to do things evenly if I can. I can't always, but it's kind of fun when I can. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. And I don't have another one like that, so we'll go like this. Six. All right. I think it's going to be better doing this. More inserts with less paper in each one. All right, and let's see. I mean, I know I'm not gonna be able to do it evenly and now. It's just not gonna be possible. One, two, three, four, five. And since I don't have one that gets that, I'm gonna use the music paper for six. Then I'm gonna look at my eco-dyed paper. And I don't have enough of that either, but that's okay. One, two, three, four, and then I can put um, a different type of paper on those two. Okay, you just that's all you do. You just gotta go through it. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then I have these three left. I'm not gonna worry about those. They can just go back to the other book. Okay. So now I have six inserts. The next thing that I do, and let's see how many pages. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten per. And if this is a this is considered four pages. One, two, three, four. So four times ten is forty. Forty pages per insert. And then um six inserts is six times 240 so 240 pages is a good amount for one of these books and if this phone turns off I'm not gonna hear it which is kind of annoying but I, I want this to be at the, the end and then I'm just gonna kind of go through my different types of papers um, see what I got here and just kind of intersperse so one Two. Let's put this one here, 
and this one here and then we can go this and this it's not that many so you know you don't have to like work too hard to get these in here oh come on be cooperative I don't know why this doesn't want to open. There we go. My fingers, I guess, right? And that's one insert. Super easy. And then I can do a little bit of sewing on them. It gives a little bit of embellishment um, to what I'm doing. So let's just quickly do the rest. It's always fun. I, I really enjoy this, um, putting together these journals. They are always interesting, I think. And we'll just go like that. And here, and here, and here, and here. So I have a little bit thicker on the outside, a little bit thicker on the inside. I think it just makes it better. And then we'll see how they fit. I'd be able to give it a good, a good feeling of how it fits. So here's a good, a nice outside cover. It's nice and a little bit thicker. Um, I got the inside one, how I want it. So now I just gotta slip the papers in here. I'll go like this and this. And this one, it's a lot easier when there's fewer too. This is really kind of nice. A lot quicker than when I'm doing them so thick. A lot of times I do them so thick and it, it's actually a little bit harder when you do that, which I'm kind of surprised. I guess live and learn, right? Live and learn. That's a good inside one. I want this one on the, I kind of want this on the outside. I really like this one. So, we're just gonna slip in these papers. It's pretty easy, really, once you get going. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Very nice, okay. And two more. Two more. Make sure I got a decent paper for the inside. I just, I don't want to take a chance of something, you know, tearing or anything on me. Can't have that happening. All right, let's put this. This one here. There we go. This one here and this one here. All right. Good. And the last one. Hey everyone, I needed to do just a continuation here of how far I got because I didn't realize it had cut off on me, the video. And so, um, <clears throat> it cut off as I was doing the book that had six inserts, which was this one. And so I put them all together and they fit very nicely. So that is 240. And of course, they'll, it'll be a little thicker because I'll be putting a few extra things in here, uh, but still leaving it very, very plain so you can work in it. Actually, I don't know how much I will be doing because um, I got to reinforce this spine, obviously. You can see this paper is old and coming apart, and I will be doing a good spine reinforcement 
on this. This is in bad shape. And covering with something pretty but um, just patterned inside and then making the cover, which is going to be the next step. So here's the six that go in this book and I have to reinforce and decorate the cover. And then um, this one has five and I have nine uh, pages, so nine in each signature. So let me let me think. Nine times four is thirty-six, and thirty-six times five. Oh, math, math. <laughs> let's let's do it this way. So I think thirty-six times five. So one hundred and eighty pages in this one. So my goal this week is to actually get these done and get the covers, get the covers done. So I thought, um, you know, I like to look at different possibilities for um, the inside papers. And, and so I'm just going to do this really quick is kind of show you... Um, <clears throat> the inside papers, um, there's just so many things you can do. And uh, there's lots of patterns and things that would look really cool inside. And then you have the backs of some of these papers are pretty amazing looking. Like that. There's also, um, if I didn't want to use that one, um, oops, <laughs> sorry, my quite sure why I have that out, but that actually is good for writing on the back of. So, um, this one is, <clears throat> oh, maybe I was saving that. Oh yeah, because this is a memoranda, um, memoranda paper from Tim Holtz, and, um, this would also be excellent. I mean, look at this. This would be really good with this green. I like that. Because I could do, yeah, one part of this maybe for the back and one part for the front. So that's a good choice. And then for this one, this would be really nice. I, kinda, I, I really like that. And then I could make the pockets with the um, other side of it. I mean, another choice um, oops, is this, just because of the it's the world, and I do like that a lot. Um, and that would go with both of them. So, kind of like, what do I think? And I like this. Maybe I'll do one the world and one this. Let's try that and save the rest of this for another one. <clears throat> so, I'm not, it's Monday morning now, and I did the bulk of this um, on Sunday night. So, or Sunday afternoon um, of the video, but I won't be able to get this posted till tonight because I don't have enough time before work to post it. But um, what I do is I just kind of figure out, okay, um, what's going to look nice. And I do kind of really, oh, I really like this for the front. So generally, um, what I do is I'll just bring it right to these edges, and I will take my pencil and just do a little mark. And then I can cut that. And if this is, this may work really well for me to do, um, like all the parts 
with this paper for one book, you know. So, here we go. So this would be the one, and then, um, And then I would come over here and mark it, and I would want it to come. I put another paper over this, and actually, you know what would be make this the most sense is use this whole paper for this. So that would probably be the easiest. Um, Make sure we account for that little bit. And so that means I'm going to make my next cut right, right about there. <clears throat> and I still have to strengthen the binding before I put it in. But if I do this all the way, I can see that I might have to cut it See, I'm just trying to figure out if I go like this, how much further is it going to come over here? And I feel like, yes, I'm going to have to take off a little bit more. It does make a difference. I've never done a whole piece all the way across, so that is a little bit new for me. And then, of course, like I said, I'm going to make the binding, you know, that. And then what I do is I will take and make some kind of pocket. Like, wouldn't this be a fantastic pocket? And so would this. Would make a great pocket. So I have to think, you know, so that, that way you use, like, right here. Oh, my gosh. So perfect. So the pocket would come right to that tape line. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut right where that tape line is. And, um, and then what I would do, so there we go, and I would only have it, I would want it to come up because then, see, you could write in the front of it, and you'd still have your flowers. So I would, between that 20, that would be my, there we go. So that would go right there. And I really like that. And then I got these beautiful flowers, and I think in the back, that that would make a good side pocket, like a tip-in type. So I think that would work really good there. So that would give me my two, my two pieces. So I really like that. Okay, so that's that's one book, and then we just have to fix, like I said, that one part of it. <clears throat> so. That's something I have to work on. So that's one piece. I'm just going to set it aside. And then in this one, I would I think I would do it like this. And actually, I think I'd go I think I'd want to go like this. For this one and this one's almost almost the right size isn't that crazy so I would come down right about there okay so this would come here and then this would just take a little off be careful not to take too much. I can always readjust later, but I want to be sure it's right. So I really like this. 
And then <clears throat> I can have this over on the back. So we do this here for the back pocket. And then the front, I think. Let's see. I'm just kind of trying to figure what's going to look the best at the front. And I think this. And I'm going to have to cut some off. All right. Mm, just a tiny bit more. Okay. There we go. All right. So, <clears throat> excuse me. That gives us the inside of this one. And again, I have to reinforce the spine because we want that to be nice and firm. And then all that will be left is to figure out how I want to do the covers. It's all going to be um, fairly plain. I'm trying to um, keep these uh, more as a plain type journal. So that's where that's at. Um, I also have these pieces. Probably what I'll do is include some of these with the journals as extra bits and pieces um, to go with them. And uh, then people can, whoever buys it, can use these um, in different parts of the journal when they work in it. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. I just wanted to get this finished up before, um, so I could get it loaded up and post it tonight. And then the next thing will be um, working on the covers. And I still don't know exactly what I want to do with the covers, so I'm thinking about that. But anyway, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye.